coming at you from the Hey Yo Studios. It's the Fade Route with D and Z. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Coming at you live from the AO studio. Hey, yo. It's the Fade Route with D and Z. I am D, and we've got a great show for you tonight. We're going to talk about a week after the trade deadline. Where are we? Uh, the White Sox and the Guardians brawl it out. And Charm City is not so charming for everyone. But we begin today's show with the Women's World Cup team. The Women's World Cup ended for the U.S. women on Saturday when they lost in penalty kicks to Sweden. 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 The U.S. women caught a lot of backlash for their attitude before and after matches during the World Cup. And lots of people seem to be happy the two-time defending champions were eliminated, Americans included. Uh, Former President Trump, too. The younger generation of women soccer players around the world seem more tactical than the U.S. women did this year. Z, are the U.S. women in trouble moving forward? Well, first and foremost, kudos to the Swedish women's national team. They played tough. The keeper, who is on Chelsea, she is a star in... The English Premier, the Women's English Premier League. Right? She did what she needed to do, and she kept out crit- two critical stops and a couple that sailed over the crossbar. One hit the post. So, you know, there was some luck involved with that, but she showed up when she needed to, made some critical saves. It was all in all. A seesaw affair. It could have gone either way. Now, the U.S. did push offensively. 11 shots on target, 22 shots overall. So it, it's not like they were down into a defensive shell. They were trying. They were pressing. So they didn't dominate possession, but they definitely kept, they kept possession at 58% of the time. But at watching the game and watching the match and seeing it, there were wingers advancing for U.S. Midfield, not there, right? I'm looking for crossing opportunities. I'm looking for passes. And all I see are a winger, a winger, and then a bunch of yellow in between. Yellow, yellow. A lot of yellow. And not the cards either. Yellow, yellow kits, yellow jerseys. Like that is very interesting to me that there was no like additional press beyond two wing offensive players. And later into the match, Andonovsky put Sophia Smith up front at the nine, and like there seemed to be a little bit of an offensive spark. There was a little bit more juice. Obviously, it didn't result in a goal because we ended up nil nil into penalty kicks. But it just seemed like Andonovsky was slow to react, no, slow to adjust, and he didn't really play a system that was conducive to victory in a win-and-go-home situation. So, at this point, some of these players are going to benefit from this because they got the year of seasoning, you know... Um, Granted, Mallory Swanson, Mallory Pugh, you know, she wasn't there. So, like, that would have made a difference. Rose Lavelle was out on yellow card accumulation. That would have made a difference. So, there are a couple of factors there. You know, you get for next World Cup, a more seasoned Trinity Rodman, a more seasoned Sophia Smith. You get, you know, another run of Lindsay Horan, Alyssa Nair, who scored a uh, PK. That was fantastic. Uh, it's one of those things that the U.S. the U.S. women are not far off. They were the two-time defending champions. It's not like they got their doors blown off. 
They, they went nil-nil with a competent team, a credible into penalty kicks, and the winning penalty kick was stopped. It just happened to cross over the line in the air. So you're a matter of millimeters away from it still going off. I'm not one of these doom and gloom people. I'm not Alexi Lawless. I'm not Carly Lloyd. I'm sure as hell I'm not, you know, 45. But I think that with a coaching change or just at least uh, an evolution in identity offensively, the U.S. women are more than okay. Yeah, Z, you know, uh, you're, you're a sweetheart. You're a nice guy. I got to crush him on this, man. I got to crush him on this. The laughter, the, ga- the, the joking around before and after games. And, you know, I got to I got to crush. I got to crush Alexander Morgan. She's not a star, Z. She's not a big time player. If you take away the Thailand game in 2019, she's only scored two goals in the last 17 World Cup games. This is our striker. This is supposed to be our best player. This is supposed to be the most dangerous player on the field from one of the most powerful nations in the cut in the world. And and then let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about Megan Rapino. Let's talk about her. She's too focused on everything else going on in the world and not focused on soccer. Coming out and talking about national anthem, dog in the country, wanting more pay. And then you miss the you miss the penalty kick, and then you laugh about it. Z, we're talking about a time in in the, in our country and in our world where women want to be equal. Well, you know what? If Kobe Bryant misses the final shot and he laughs about it afterwards, we crush him. If Derek Jeter strikes out to end the World Series. He gets destroyed. If Tom Brady doesn't hit the open guy in the back of the end zone to win the Super Bowl, we kill him. I understand she's 38, and then this is her farewell, but she's too focused on wokeism, Nike checks, playing with biological men. Like, I'm sorry. You don't you don't get to talk that game. Lose in the first elimination round and not get crushed for it. You crush them all. You want to crush the coach, crush the coach. Crush him too. The team didn't score. They didn't play aggressive. They were not killers out there. They're too worried about what they're going to do for the national anthem and not focused on their opponent. And let me tell you, their opponents, every team they played got pride in their country and was focused on beating our ass. And that's not where we were, man. That's not where we were. Um, I, 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 I don't want to say I'm happy we lost, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not surprised. Saw this coming. So I'm you're not... kind of you're kind of standing with Alexi Lawless on this, like that. The, 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 the Alexi I'm, Lawless, Carly Lloyd. You're right I am there. right there with Carly Lloyd because. I, it reminds me of it reminds me of those Nick teams in the '90s playing against Jordan, singing "Attack of the Baldies" as they headed to the court. You lost already, man. You lost already. You're going up against a killer right now. He's not singing. He's ready to kill you because he wants to win the championship. You won the last two years. You've been puffing out your chest and talking a big game, running your mouth this whole World Cup. And you got your asses handed to you. And I watched the game. I watched the whole game. And it was it was awful. And the end was the worst. Blatantly missing kicks. You're 38 years old. How many World Cups you've been to? And you can't even fucking hit the post. Come on. Come on, Z. You gotta give him a little bit more shit. You gotta you gotta dig into this. I, this is what I don't have about. to dig into anything I don't want to. That's the beauty part. That's the, that is the freedom that you're espousing, right? In America, I can give them a pass if I so choose. Now, they're two different things. You can be critical of them tactically, and 100% you should be critical of them tactically because they did not deliver tactically. It's the other stuff. The other stuff, I don't get two shits about. I really do not care. You know, true equality is to criticize their play. Like, that's fine. 
I'm fine with that. We can do that. The other shit, no, nah, I'm not with that. Like, if we want to talk X's and O's, if we want to talk execution, like, I'm, I'm on board. They didn't execute. They got beat. I don't want to hear the other stuff. But be honest with me. The other stuff is immaterial. Be honest with me. If Kobe Bryant misses the final shot in game seven and laughs about it afterward, do we crush him on this show or do we talk about him having a great series? He's going to get crushed and they will be credited for, he will be credited for a series. It will be both. It can be both. Okay. You okay. can, you can say, you can say Kobe fair. played great. That's fair. Perfect, perfect example. Like Joel Embiid against the Raptors, right? Joel Embiid had a fantastic series against the Raptors. What's he known for? Kawhi Leonard shot over him. Kawhi Leonard made the shot over him. Like both things can be true, but where you lose me is somehow it's, you know, it's not patriotic to go and put the crest on and represent your country. And you know what? In this country, we're allowed you know, we have freedom of speech in our First Amendment. We're allowed to say that stuff. Now, you also, you're, you know, you say it, you suffer the consequences for it. Like, that's the, the other side of the coin. I'm with you on that. I, I completely agree. Like, if you talk shit, fine. That's fine. But it can't, if, if we're talking about sports, let's talk about sports. Let's not talk about the other stuff. Let's talk about the game. Is Alex Morgan a superstar? No. Okay, good. No. She co- Are she you happy to see Megan Rapino go? I'm indifferent to her. Okay. I'm indifferent to her. Because at the end of the day, like, she didn't deliver this time. She's won a golden boot. What more? And she's had a stellar career. You know? Like, I- I'm glad that CNN put up the tail of the tape between her and she, Alexi Lawless. Listen. Like, there was came, nothing. She, not she, she, she was subbed late against Sweden, did nothing, and then she missed her penalty kick. I think she came in in the 25th minute or 25 minutes left or whatever it was, mm-hmm. and she didn't she didn't do anything, you know? I mean, it was, it's over. I'm glad it's over. Let's get some new people in here that are focused on playing soccer, winning, X's and O's, tactical. This is the World Cup. It comes around every four years. Someone was saying yesterday on, I forget, it was, it was either a podcast or on, on a, one of the TV shows I was watching. France came into the World Cup defending champions. There was silence. Silence as they walked to the field. Silence. And they came in and they took care of business. It's just serious, man. Especially you talk about you putting that crest on. You're not representing a state. You're not representing a city. You're representing our country. You're representing our country. Yeah, we do have laws that allow you to talk and do whatever you want to say. You want to talk. You want to. You want to be woke. You want to talk people down. That's fine. But the minute you put, you go on that field. You put on that uniform. You represent America. So what you do from then on, it's, it's under a magnifying glass, man. And all around the world, not only here, but everybody was happy to see us go. And compare that to. Team USA in basketball, like utmost respect for playing against them, watching them, being around them, even in baseball. World Baseball Classic is taking on a new, a, a whole new perspective as, pe- as people in Major League Baseball get get to wear their team logos or their from their country and go play. There's no joking around. It's serious. It's got to be serious. Um, so my mm-hmm. issue is this. Let's let's compare let's compare apples to apples, right? The men's national team in soccer versus the women's national team in soccer. The men who have done ugats. Sure. Let, let's 100%. Talk about that. If it was the same situation, we would be lauding that they got to the second round. Like what we did in Qatar. We lauded the fact that they got to the knockout round. So, I I thought it was I mean, listen, I thought it was laughable. I thought it was laughable that they got to the second round. I was happy they got to the second round, but then again, there weren't any other shenanigans going on. There wasn't any other bullshit. Well, there There's were. Not we all just the didn't drama. Know. The Greg Ma- Walter Gio Reyna. Maybe, history. maybe we're right. Maybe there was, and I didn't know, and I didn't hear about it. But that's all I heard about with these women. That's all I heard about was the national anthem, 
and how much they should be getting paid and joking around before the games and laughing around. It, that That's not what I want to hear. I don't want to see that. I don't want to know any about that stuff. I want to know that you're here to play. You're going to give it your all. And you're proud of the uh, proud of the uniform you're wearing. You know? Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much. With FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their hoodie, snapback, graphic tees, accessories, and more. Season 3 merch is up now. Get it while you can. Go to fckclout.com and get all of your needs from men and women. That's fckclout.com. We move on. The college football landscape has changed quite a bit since last season. The Pac-12 has dissolved before our very eyes, and the formation of super conferences are right around the corner. Last week, Washington and Oregon announced they would be joining the Big Ten. Arizona State, Arizona, and Utah joined the Big 12. I believe they're up to like 18 teams now. Uh, Cal and Stanford seem to be heading to the ACC, while the Big Ten and the SEC seem to be actively recruiting schools. Z, will this increase or decrease the popularity of college football? It's hard to say. You know, because we're really going towards that power five kind of idea where you have the big deep pockets and then everybody else is just kind of happy to be there. And I don't think that's necessarily good for the sport, right? Because you're just going to have really huge gaps in talent. You know, because this this is going to affect recruiting. It's going to affect NILs. And, you know, the big question of them all, you know, I mean, obviously, like, there are a bunch of things going around. Like, Texas and Oklahoma are going to the SEC. Oregon and Washington are going to the Big Ten. Like, you know, because I want to see the epic Ohio State-Oregon matchup. Yeah. Or Arizona. Arizona State. Utah. They're going to the Big 12. So... You have Oregon State, Washington State, Berkeley, and Stanford. That's the Pac-12. That's not 12. <laughs> I, I may just be a lowly math teacher, but that, that that's not 12. And so what does the Pac-12 do? What do they do? Do they dissolve? Do they try to join the Mountain West? Like, what do they do? Merge with the Mountain West. <laughs> and, you know, that, that's all you can do. And well, if you have 12, think- use the Pac-12 name. So I think, yeah, I think in, I I don't think the Mountain West can join the Pac-12 because if they do, each team would have to pay thirty million dollars to get out of the the Mountain West to go to the Pac-12. So the only thing that could happen is the Pac-12. Yeah, they could merge, or the Pac-12 can go to the Mountain West. And from what I understand, this this is all happening because the Pac-12's TV deal ran out. I mean, yeah, I mean, the listen, money, it's the where, money. Follow the money. Follow the money, but where does the NCAA, man? Like, th- this, th- you're right. Follow the money. The, the, the TV, the TV deals are now running college football. Yeah. This no. situation's out of control. Like, Z, how far away are we from leagues drafting high school players? How far away are we from that? College football is a disaster. The names of the conferences don't mean anything. Where they play in the country doesn't mean anything. If a player doesn't like the way he's being treated or coached, he can trans into the transfer portal. Sounds like free agency to me. Some players were caught betting on sports. Northwestern is in severe trouble for hazing. You can pay players now with the NILs and hide money and do all that other fraudulent shit. I think the super conferences are going to war down are going to are going to water down the product. I'm pretty sure the SEC and the Big Ten are now going after Clemson and Florida State. Right? You got to imagine that if the Big Ten gets Florida State, the SEC has to get Clemson, right? And I mean, the, a- the ACC is looking at SMU, 
Berkeley, and Stanford. Could you imagine, like, the ACC, right? The Atlantic Coast Conference. You have having a teams California like team. Syracuse. You have, like, NC State, California. Like, that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it's all based on money. My, my question to you is this. Where does Notre Dame go? ACC. Mm, really? That's my guess. Yeah, they have to. They they can't they can't go into a conference with schools with big big bigger with schools on their level because they got so, their Notre Dame. Even they though can't ge- go to- even though geographically they would fit in with Michigan and Ohio State. <sighs> yeah, I don't. Well, let's be real. They can't go to the SEC, right? No. We both agree. We both agree that would be a very, very bad idea. They'd never win again. Um. Yeah. I guess. I guess they could go to the Big Ten, but you know the problem is, is you, if you want, you want to have a super conference, fine. Okay. But you can't have more than sixteen teams. That's just too many teams. I mean, it's just you, you're not going to play everybody in the conference. How are you going to play everybody? And then you have subdivisions within that. So you'll have the east and the west, the north and the right. south, you know, A and, and B, whatever you want to call it. You just you just watering down, you just watering down the product and and I just I don't know, I don't know how to fix this without someone coming in and being in control, but that's who is in control. The T the TV people are in control, man. Oh. This is it's ah, I don't know how you fix it. So how long before you have the Power Five Conference being your primary division of NCAA football? Two years, and they create another subdivision, like you have FBS. I think I think uh, Colorado's going to the Big Twelve, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Two years. Two years, and it's over. Florida State and Clemson are going to be the last pillars, like. And then what's going to happen to like the Mountain Wests and the Sun Belts and the Ivy League? You know, grant. I mean, granted. Like, you know, let's be real. Oregon and Washington were the linchpin of the Pac-12, and they're gone. Yeah, <laughs> they're gone. Yeah. So it, it's amazing to me. And how does this affect the other sports? If that's the thing. Like, you're in the middle of. It's not one thing. Okay, we play on Saturday. College football play on Saturday. Okay, no problem. Softball, you're doing a three-game series in the middle of the week. You're away from school. Allegedly, you're still student athletes. How is this going to work? Yeah, and the argument they're trying to make now is that they're not. They're not. They're not. <laughs> they're right. <laughs> they're athletes. That's that's the argument that's being made now. Is that they're athletes. They need to be paid. Seventeen-year-old kid needs to be paid, and they can't just use and it can't be just his scholarship because he's got to go pitch in the first game of a of a doubleheader against Pittsburgh on Tuesday. Even right. though he's got a math test on Wednesday. Exactly. Like, I don't and then, know. Like, and then, like what percentage of these people are actually even going pro? And how many of them even have to now? I don't know if they I don't know if they all have to anymore. Like if you think about it, let's think of a guy like Johnny Manzo. I'm right? glad let's, you brought him up. I was just yeah, thinking. Let's about talk, him. let's let's pretend let's just let's fast let's say Johnny Manzel was was coming out next year. Right, mm-hmm. he's gonna make so much money on his NIL that he he doesn't even have to come out. He doesn't have to play. In fact, it would behoove him to play all four years, make as much money as he can, and then whatever. The kid he's wins the Heisman. Him. He's fine. Who is the other guy? Who's, oh, T. Martin. Think about T. Martin. T. Martin. Right. Mm-hmm. He came out. He was, I think, before. No, he was after. Yeah, he was after Peyton. Yes, and he won the national championship for Tennessee. Imagine how much he would be getting because it's like, oh wow, Peyton Manning's this good. This guy actually won the national championship with Tennessee. What I mean, about a guy like Maurice Claret? Yeah, sure. Like Maurice Claret, like he was a fantastic player. Like didn't have the size to make in the N- NFL. Didn't have, like, didn't have the track record to make it in the NFL. Regardless of what Jim Trestle tried to do and what Ohio State tried to do for him, like he couldn't cut in the NFL. But he was enough of a star that he could have, like, it, in today's 
economy in sports, in, in collegiate sports, he would be very well for himself. And that's sure. just football. That's just football. Let's not even talk about basketball, right? A guy like Adam Morrison would have never come out of Gonzaga. Like he was at like he peaked in college, right? He had the look, he had the shooting ability, but like he was the star. But like he could have made bank off of that caveman thing. Tyler Hansborough, another one. Psycho T never could have never would have played for the Pacers. Mm-hmm. Like he made his he made his bones in college. Shit, can you imagine if Shaq was under NIL rule and it was legal? Yeah, well Shaq was getting paid illegally anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I, yeah, I, I get what could, you're could saying. Could you imagine? But, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like the yeah. cat's out of the bag, man. You know, it, it's it's not going backwards because you neutered the NCAA, and really the only way you're gonna to fix this is with some kind of federal injunction and some kind. You, you need to get, unfortunately, you're probably gonna need to get Congress involved, and you're gonna have to regulate it. You're gonna have to regulate this somehow because it's way too much like the Wild West, right? You can't help but smile when you see a balloon. The simplest occasion is a party. Westchester Popstar is located in New Rochelle, New York, offers balloon styling and decor for all life's events. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, showers, school and corporate events, store openings, or just because. Westchester Popstars takes balloons and shapes them into works of art, creating decorative installations for your special occasions. No event is too big or too small, and their custom personalization service is top notch. Westchester Pop Stars is a private studio, quickly expanding. In-person consultation is by appointment only. Send an email to westchesterpopstars at gmail.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. No need to hire an event stylist. All you need is balloons. Currently servicing Westchester, Putnam, New York City, and Connecticut. To find Westchester Pop Stars, search for them on Instagram, Facebook, Oh, well, moving over to baseball, we're a little over a week removed from the MLB trade deadline, and we have some clear winners and losers so far. The Rangers, Dodgers, Astros, and Cubs have cruised, while parent contenders like the Marlins, Reds, Angels, and D-backs have scuffled mightily, especially the D-backs and Angels. Who has surprised you the most? Well, I got two. I have, oh, the, too. I have the Rangers, because how could you not be surprised by that? 7-0. and Well, 7-1, and because they lost today. Jordan Montgomery went down. But like, you don't expect them to hit the ground running just like that. You expect a little bit of an adjustment period. And Evaldi is still out. He is. Now, once you get him back, if you get him back, that's a shot. That's a wonderful shot in the arm. You can even use him. You could use him in a short relief role, too, because he throws so hard. And he has experience coming out of the pen. So that, you know, they have options. And Boach definitely, you know, he's he's definitely, you know, hitting on all cylinders right now. But that team and in the National League, how can you not be surprised by the Cubs? Like they're yeah. they're they're not missing a beat with Stroman out. Right? Like they're very impressive. They're slugging. They're they are they're hanging tough in this division and they're they're gonna make some noise and it wouldn't surprise me if the Reds continue to falter like this if the Reds fall out and the Cubs ascend like that's you know that's within their own possibility and if they do get Stroman back as much as I dislike him uh, he will be a good <laughs> as shot as much as I dislike him <laughs> as much as I dislike Marcus Stroman I can't deny the fact that he's a good player but there you go. I got my compliment out of the way for you, Marcus. I still don't like you. But exactly. But <laughs> as far as like who's really scuffling and who's surprising, and I thought the Angels were gonna be so much better. I, I really you know, you you put together you you infuse that much talent into a roster like that and you still have Otani. That that's the key. You kept Otani. He kept Otani for this shit, right? And he's like, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Like, it's a it's a good thing I'm leaving. Yeah, it's that's a, right. It's a good thing I'm leaving. So, like, I am really surprised by how 
dead in the water and underachieving the angels are. Like, I really thought, it, I thought. I you were me. all over it. You loved they, it. They had me. They got me. Like, I, all right, let me I ask you a question. Got... All right, let me ask you a question since you mm-hmm. brought up Otani. You're Otani's agent. Okay. Who are you sitting down with first? What number are you starting at? All right. I have Padres, Mariners, Dodgers, Yankees, and I guess the Angels. I'll keep the Angels there. I'll keep them. I'll I'll have like five screens. I'm in Tahiti. I'm just sitting there and I'm not budging below 550. Wow. Okay. Now How many I'm, years? That's the tricky part. Being that he's a DH, like you can actually give him a, a seven year contract. Yeah. A, a seven or eight year contract. If the arm goes, the bat may still play. And that, that's within, within their own possibility. So even if you want to go like a five year with the op, with options and you know, like, you can totally work, but I'm nah, not budget. but you wouldn't I'm do not... that, right? You're not throwing that on the table here, Zayden. You're not talking about. You're not talking about opt outs. You're not. You're not. You're. You're not giving them. Uh, you're not giving uh, a trade clause. You're not giving them any of that shit, right? I am. I'm getting as much money as I can. I'm trying to go fully guaranteed if I can. I'm trying to. This is. This is my retirement fund. <laughs> This is my retirement fund. It's my kids' retirement fund, and they're not even working yet. <laughs> yeah, that's so, how I'm viewing this. Yeah, so me, um, I'm with you. I'm, I'm actually, I'm starting, I'm starting with the Yankees, and I'm going to the Mets, and then I'm coming back and doing the the, uh, the Giants and the Dodgers. Mm. I'm doing it in that order. Not um, the Mariners. No, I'm not interested. Um, I don't like the ballpark. I'm not. I'm not into it. We might go at the end, but he's not going there. Um, I want him to. I, as an agent, I want him to go to the Giants. However, if the Dodgers are offering ridiculous amounts of money, we'll go there. I would save the Angels for last. I'd make an appointment to go see them, but I wouldn't show up. <laughs> and I would just call them and tell them, "Yeah, we decided you were just going to waste our time." So. We already we're signing a deal with whoever, um, but thanks, and we'll we'll see you. That's that's how I would do it. Uh, my number is I'm starting at six sixty eight years. Oof. That's where I'm starting, and then we'll go from there. That's it. But the John to me the Giants is the best. The Giants the Giants have money. The Giants wanted Judge. They wanted Correa. You know they're. They've got money. They, they contended most of this year. Like, he's going to go there. He's going to hit bombs into the bay like Barry Bonds did. Like, you know, clearly this front office knows what they're doing. Kapler is there. Good coach. And the Dodgers. The Dodgers are good. I don't have a problem with them going to the Dodgers. They have money. It's L.A. We, we could do this, too. Now, now that's what do you the... think about that? I mean, do you think that, I mean, considering the fact that they whiffed on Judge. They whiffed on Correa. Like they, they were the laughing stock of Major League Baseball. They're ten games over five hundred, and they're wild card too. Love it, love it, fucking love it. They're love half. It. A, they're half a game behind the Phillies for love wild the Giants. Card one. And how could he not like that weather? How could he not like that stadium? Like, dude, this is this is a good move for us, bro. That's the way. This is a good move for us. This is good. That's that's the way I pitch it. But to go back to the original question. Uh, so yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on the Cubs. I love how they went for it. They went for it, man. Um, not trading Bellinger. Uh, only two games back of the Brewers. They got a chance in that division. And I'm with you also on the Angels. Um, so those are my two teams, my surprise teams. Uh, huge swing and a miss, Z. It's a huge swing and a miss. I know you loved it. You were all about it. You were proud of them, happy for them. But let's be real. They are, I think, well, they're three, they're three and seven in their last ten. I'm pretty sure they've only won one or two games since the All Star break. Disaster. Uh, they missed on getting Arenado. We talked about that. I thought that would have been a smart play. Go get Arenado. Go get an MVP type third baseman. Team him with Otani. 
you're ready to go. You went and picked up all those pitchers for God knows what reason. Sure, let's do this. No, the Angels are donezo. Well, you know, if you if you're looking at it, they're only at a plus eight differential for the year. That ain't gonna cut it, right? The Yankees are at a plus six, and they're two and a half games ahead of the Angels in the wild card, right? If if you're looking at this. It, run differential is going to be, you know, you need to score more than your opponent. That's the basis of the game, right? Like, if, if you're looking at another you disappointment, need to get on base. You got to get on base. If you're looking at it, San Diego's a plus 61. They're four under 500, four out in the wild card. That's a huge disappointment. Oh, now, they had, awful. Like, at least the Mets. Oh, like here they we go. Re- they recognize. Here we go. All right, it's here the we truth. Go. Here we it's go. What did the Mets recognize? Tell the me. The Mets recognize that they did, they're not going anywhere, so <laughs> they got rid of people. It's a refreshing honesty. Mm. Other teams should try it sometime, like the Yankees, like the Padres. We're fucking dead. We're dead. Let's get let's get out from under some of these onerous contracts, and maybe just maybe we can get a, a prospect with who we'd actually call up. Yeah. Unlike Jason Dominguez, who we're going to bury in Triple A till he's 65. Like, it makes no sense. No. It makes absolutely no sense. So. The Yankees have another guy that they're burying. Guys okay. like Crush. Yeah. Bring Herrera. him up, Brian. What the fuck are you waiting for? You guys want to make the playoffs? Go get him. What are you doing? Everson Pereira. Everson Pereira, yep. But, you know, there are teams that are going for there are teams that hedge their bets and the teams that hedge their bets selectively like cherry picking people like a Kenyon Middleton like the Padres hedge their bets <laughs> the Padres hedge their bets who and it's not working it's just flat out not working we got this guy at the, the trade deadline was 5 o'clock we got him at 502 <laughs> it took us a while to get that paperwork in Welcome to the Bronx, Kenyon Middleton. Shave that beard. <laughs> Shave that beard. For all the grill masters, green thumbers, home repair heroes, and DIY aficionados in the Richmond, Virginia area, if you're looking for a personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience, look no further than Thacker Ace Hardware in Colonial Heights, Virginia. Owner Don Rackley and his team of local experts have everything you need to tackle all of your home projects. I'm talking paints by Benjamin Moore and Clark in Kensington, power tools by Craftsman and Milwaukee, electrical, plumbing, hardware, and let's not miss the grill. Weber, Big Green Egg, Traeger, Blackstone, top shelf, amazing. And for all you green thumbers, their nursery department is fantastic. Give them a call today, 804-766-4223, or stop by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. That's 804-766-4223, or swing by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. Thacker Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. But there are some controversies around Major League Baseball right now, and one no more prevalent than the one in Charm City. As the Baltimore Orioles play-by-play announcer Kevin Brown, not that one, the announcer, Kevin Brown was removed from the mass and broadcast over the weekend and suspended by the team because he openly criticized the team's lack of success against the Tampa Bay Rays the last few years. The comments seemed soft-hearted, and Brown seemed to be just reading from statistics that appeared on the screen behind him. He was the only one punished for this for this incident. Not the producer, not the graphics guy, just Brown. Several play-by-play announcers like Michael Kay, Gary Cohen, they have come to his defense and they have openly criticized the Baltimore Orioles. During a great season, how could the Orioles be so upset about that? (laughs) And 
not more encouraged by the future? How could they just, how could they just punish this guy for speaking the truth? I mean, it's Z. It's pretty bed. It's pretty petty, right? I mean, he's a play-by-play announcer. Like, what? What are we talking about right now? And you know what, Z? That's bad juju. That's bad juju. That's not something you want in baseball, man. Baseball people are very superstitious. That is being very petty, and that is bad, bad juju. He didn't say anything bad. He simply stated the truth. Maybe there's a history. Maybe there's something we don't know. Maybe they told this guy he needs to stop being so critical, or just maybe they told him to stop telling the truth about how bad we were. I don't know. There has to be more to this story, right? It couldn't be just based off of this. And again, why was the only guy punished? Why wasn't a producer punished? Like, there's a whole team of people in a truck that work on scripts, work on, um, you know, the the billboard, work on the stats the, and information. The stats and information. Like, why is he the only person losing pay over this? Told to go home. <laughs> You're suspended. Um, listen. He should sue the Orioles, <laughs> tie this up in litigation so he can finish the season, and then get another job. Get out of there. That's just, I hear he's good. I saw Michael K and a bunch of other people come to his defense. They like him. So hopefully he can get a job somewhere else. Forget the Orioles. I mean, this isn't the first time that they've run off good broadcasters. They've run off John uh, Miller in the past. And Gary Cohen mentioned that as much. In his defense of Mr. Brown, the Orioles, they have very thin skin. And we've seen it several times. The Angelos family is just notoriously thin skin. And they will not, for example, they will not do interdivision trades for that reason. Right? They, they don't want the publicity. They, they don't want the criticism of the team when things go wrong. And unfortunately, this is a major blowback in their face. It's kudos to Awful Announcing on Twitter to, for bringing this up. But he, if, if you're going to do this, if you're the Orioles and you're going to do this, Brown can't be the only one. However, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna dignify it with the response from that perspective because it's so stupid. And it's so petty. Like, there was an acknowledgement that Tampa has owned the Orioles in recent history, but the Orioles have won this season at the trot. So there was an acknowledgement that things are turning around. But all you're doing is saying that it's the same old petty Orioles organization. Like, it's like the idea of new money. You can't just, you can't embrace the fact that your circumstances have changed. So you're kind of hanging out in similar circles that you used to. You're, you know, you're not breaking old ties. You're, you're not changing to adapt to your newly found wealth. This is, this is a failure to adapt on Baltimore's part. And, you know, if anything, he should just tell him to fuck off at the end of the year. <laughs> and you know what? He would have plenty of teams knocking on the door, right? Howie Rose came to his defense. Gary Cohen. The fans were chanting, free Kevin Brown. <laughs> the, ch- the fans in Baltimore were chanting, free Kevin Brown. Like, come on. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. And it, all you're doing is detracting from what you're doing on the field. He's going to be back on Friday. So, like, there's a little bit of a mea culpa on the part of the Orioles, but I, they have to give him back pay. I'm sorry. If they suspended him, they have to give him at least back pay. And I would, I would want a public apology. If he's I was, not making much right now. I mean, come on, he's a play-by-play guy. Like, what the F, man? For the Orioles, you look he's still staying there doing this shit. <laughs> oh my god. But it's just a bad look all the way around. Could you imagine 
if the Yes Network suspended Michael K God, for, for comments, <laughs> but or critical comments or SNY. But He's Gary, such a Gary, homer, he would never do that. Gary Cohen is critical of the Mets. Now, if Steve Cohen and the and SNY, you know, if the Mets and SNY turned around and said, Gary, we don't like what you've been saying, we're going to sit you down. Like, yeah, they, like, what, they, what? Would, they would crucify him. They yeah, but crucify you know what? Him. If you had a problem with what this kid said, why not just talk to him about it? Like, you don't got to suspend him. You don't got to send him home. I just be like, hey, man. Like, go easy on us, you know, try to talk about the future and stop talking so much about the past. Like, there's a nicer way to go about it than to sit them down and send them home. Jeez. I mean, it could have been worse. They could have outright fired him. Like, Dave, like Dave, better him on the field. Yeah. I mean, like David Justice, when he was critical of A-Rod, he got fired by the Yes Network. So, <laughs> I mean, there, there are harsher, there are definitely harsher punishments. Is your hair thinning or is your hairline receding? Scalp micropigmentation will fill in the areas where your hair is missing by creating a short buzz cut look. Micropigmentation is a non-invasive procedure that will create the illusion of hair follicles for seven to 10 years. For people with alopecia, this could be a permanent fix. For people with scars on their scalp, this is a great way to camouflage a scar. Don't lose confidence or feel like you need to wear a hat wherever you go. Marquez Studio is located in the Bronx and is open for all your scalp micropigmentation needs. Consultations are free and appointments can be made any day of the week. Get your hairline back with scalp micropigmentation. The techs at Marquez Studio have over 30 years of hair cutting experience and can assist you with all of your questions. Call to schedule a consultation today, 646-221-8728. You can also visit them on Instagram at Bronx Marquez to see their gallery and view all their satisfied customers. Again, that is Marquez Studio, located in the Bronx, New York, 646-221-8728. Speaking of harsher punishment, <laughs> there was quite a scuffle over the weekend between the White Sox and the Guardians. Jose Ramirez and Tim Anderson, specifically. Jose Ramirez slid into second base and shortstop Tim Anderson stood over him as he waited for the throw to come in from the outfield. The two had words and Ramirez got up and Tim Anderson came out swinging. His first two lunges missed and then Jose Ramirez connected on a right hook and put Anderson on his back knocked him the fuck out. <laughs> After the game, Ramirez said he didn't like how Anderson disrespected the game and did not appreciate things he said. Reports all started to circulate as well about an incident that took place between Anderson and his own teammate, Yasmani Grandal, before the All-Star break. Grandal denied the reports that he allegedly walked up and slapped Anderson in the face if when Anderson said that he would happily pack his bags and get him the fuck out of the locker room if he didn't want to be there. <laughs> so what's, wor- <laughs> what's Sorry, worse? Sorry, that's pretty funny. You don't want to be here? <laughs> two-piece and a biscuit. That's, that's what Tim Anderson does. He got, he got the old two-piece. As Jorge Masvidal once said, the two-piece and a biscuit. So what's worse for Tim Anderson? His batting average, 244. His one home run. Oof. The Grandal incident. The Ramirez incident. Or playing for a team that's 23 games under 500 with a payroll that is higher than half the league. There's a yeah. lot to unpack there. There's a lot to choose from. Which one? Yeah, goes? so I'm going with getting dropped on live television. I mean, you just can't. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever gonna forget that. That's like the the fight between Jose Bautista and uh, uh, Odor, uh, where he just he got Joey Bats right in the jaw, right in the chops. You can always rebound your season next year. You know, getting slapped behind closed doors, nobody knows about it. You know, they're still refuting that. But this clip of him getting squared on his chin and going down and pretty much falling asleep oh it's done so he's done so i gotta say the 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 knockout is bad the knockout, <laughs> the knockout's bad but getting 
clipped by your own teammate because you mouthed off about allegedly. Allegedly. Now, you know, Grandal does deny this, but you get clipped by your teammate for mouthing off. That's pretty bad. But it's been a rough year for Tim Anderson. And <laughs> you know what? Your wise man once said, your ego's writing checks your body can't catch. <laughs> and that is that is where Tim Anderson is right now. Like, you have fans of the White Sox calling for him to be DFA. Tim Anderson was one of the few All Stars you had in recent history, and now he's. Hey, wait, did somebody get hurt? Fight <laughs> too. Aloy Jimenez. Yeah, got hey, Aloy hurt. Jimenez got stepped on. I think. I think he was. He Malik, was uh, Malik, Malik, Malik. <laughs> I don't want to go back out here, coach. But you know, and plus. Oh, we we even buried the lead. Tim Anderson got six games for for the suspension for getting knocked out. The guy who did the knocking out got three games. So even the league doesn't like Tim Anderson. It's like, dude, just go, go, just go, just get out of here for a bit. Just get out of here for a bit, man. Go, oh, just go, please, for the love of God. But you know, it's a rough, it's a rough go of it. It's a rough campaign this year for Mr. Anderson, and. You know, the one home run is definitely a killer, but getting clipped by your own teammate is embarrassing. <laughs> How do you go back into that locker room? How do you go back into the clubhouse after you get knocked out by your teammate and neither one of you gets traded? Like, it's the trade deadline. You figure one of you's going. At that point, shit. Like, Grandal is like, maybe this will be the case. Maybe they'll, fuck, maybe they'll release me. Like, something. Like, please get me out of here. <laughs> Like, what do I got to do? We hit him with a chair? Like, you know, what was RKO? What do I got to do? DDT? Like, what do you want me to do? Like, I'll do it. I just want out of here. I just want to get the fuck out of here. So, yeah, it's, it's a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad week. It's a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad season for Mr. Anderson. But at this point, spin it forward, Kenya and Middleton also had something to say on his way out about how there are no rules. You had players like skipping meetings, skipping PFP and oh, in yeah, spring I saw training. That. In so... spring training. How does Pedro Grafal how does he survive this season? The inmates are running the asylum. Like they you have rookies falling asleep in the bullpen. You have pitchers saying, fuck this, I'm not gonna take ground balls. Like and the manager's like, okay. Like how do you survived this. Tony La Russa wouldn't have survived it. Tony La Russa barely survived a year and a half. So if you're the White Sox, are you canning for fall or what are you doing? Yeah, you gotta start all over. I mean they're I mean we both had them pretty high. Yeah. We had the White Sox doing really well and I mean they've got really good players and they had really good pitching and I don't know what happened. I mean this this division was very, very winnable and now it's just I mean, they're they're done. So I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. Um, they're 14 games out. It's ridiculous. I mean, the Tigers are ahead of them for God's sake. It's possible that the Twins can finish this year at 500 and win that division. Yep. Like it, that's that's a the very definition of a shit division. You know, and the White Sox. This is all on them. Like this is the team, right? You want you want to talk about the Cardinals? They were a colossal disappointment. You want to talk about the Mets? They've been a colossal disappointment. You want to talk about the Padres? They've been a colossal disappointment. You want to talk about the Yankees? The Yankees are a colossal disappointment. They're in last place, but they have a, they're above 500. Mm. Right? They're at least above 500. Right. The White Sox invested all this money, and they're a joke. They're an absolute joke. And everybody thought the Cubs were going to be the joke. Right? You look, look at that now. Juxtapose the Cubs with the White Sox. The Cubs were supposed to be rebuilding. The Cubs are in second place. The Cubs are going to make the playoffs. Well, you also said, I mean, you even said you thought that they should have sold. They should have sold Bellinger, which I think they probably should have, even they though they're doing have, well. Yes. They still should have because he's gone after this year. He's yeah. probably going to be looking for a big contract now. Unless they feel that they're going to lock him up. Unless they feel that he's, he's going to be willing to stay. But, you know, it's... It's a bad look on the south side of Chicago 
Like yeah. they, the Cubs have stolen the headlines. They've stolen the town back. Well, they probably never had the, the White Sox. Probably never had the town to begin with. But the Cubs have all the attention, and the White Sox are just there with egg on their face. It's been a colossal, colossal failure, and it's part and parcel due to the failures, the personal, professional failures of one Tim Anderson. You can't have one without the other in this case. want to get on the action we want to hear from you hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com slide in our dms on ig at fade route podcast drop us a dm on twitter at fade route dnz comment on our youtube channel the fade route with dnz questions comments picks segment suggestions you name it we want to hear from you get at us in crowd The choice is yours. Swipe left or swipe right. All right, boys and girls, particularly my online dating fans, we have a statement. And you either swipe left or you swipe right. Swipe left or swipe right on Kareem Hunt to the Saints. Um, you know what? I love it. I'm swiping right. I love this move. I think people are underestimating how good the Saints could possibly be this year. They now have three backs that are capable of toting the rock. Mike T is, is coming back. Chris Olave is a home run threat. And Derek Carr is actually one of the best deep ball throwers in the league. Be so still my heart. You just complimented right. Derek Carr. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I sure did. I couldn't <laughs> believe it myself when I wrote it before we even <laughs> got in the production meeting. What is? Are you feeling okay? I know, I know, but you know what? I'm just looking at their offense, and I'm like, and I'm looking at their offense, and then I'm looking at their divisions. Like, who's the threat? Atlanta? I mean, is really is Atlanta your biggest threat? Uh, I mean, Mike T. If Mike T. comes back and plays, uh... I don't know. Like, that's a big if. You know, like how how much has happened since Michael Thomas last suited up? Oh, a lot. Know, a lot a has lot. happened in the world since Michael Thomas last suited up. But, you know, I got to swipe right up in this, too. Alvin Kamara is suspended. Like, you don't know what's going to happen after that, right? Like, maybe you want to get him out of town if Hunt is doing well. Like, I, they, I have Jamal, they have Jamal they also, Williams, too, right? Who led the league in touchdown, rushing touchdowns last year. Yeah. Yeah. 17. So, that's pretty solid. I mean, Jamal Williams is a different kind of cat. Like he was like trashing beignets and like you know he was he was trying to turn heel in in New Orleans. Like he's just trying to be a he's trying on, to turn heel. He's trying to be a full on bad guy before he even suits up with the Saints. He's like bad guy did it did did did. Say goodbye to the bad guy, but you know it, and it really like if Michael Thomas comes back and he plays well. You have Alave, Traquan Smith, Michael Thomas, James Washington, Shahid, Taysom Hill. Has their really, defense is good. Their defense they, is good. Their, their, their defense is really solid. Now, like tight end is something that could be interesting. Foster Moreau, who's coming back from cancer. Uh, Jimmy Graham is back in so New Orleans. So if Derek Carr or Jameis Winston can get the job done, because – if Derek Carr doesn't struggle, they have, you know, they have a legitimate backup. It's not like when he was in Las Vegas and Oakland, or we like, oh, Matt McGloin is going to go in. Who? Remember yeah, I was just Matt? about to say that. <laughs> He's the guy who started the Raiders playoff game. No, not I know who you are. I know who you're talking about. I know. <laughs> Matt McFriggin' Gloin. There's a, there's a trivia question for you kids. Matt, Matt, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> that train's never late. Where's Matt McGloin? But I like Hunt a lot. I think he's going to be a good one-two punch. I'm swiping right big time on this. And if they can, you know, have a three-headed monster, that's even better. And if they want to ship Alvin Kamara out, that's even better. Because you could probably get some draft capital for him, if not another player. So, you know, the Saints have some options here. And you're right. Who's scaring you in that division? The Panthers? The Bucks and Baker Mayfield? 
the Falcon, the Falcons, maybe if Desmond Ritter's okay, if he's decent. But you know, this this could potentially be the Saints division to run away with. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. Swipe left or swipe right. Number two, Manchester City repeats in the English Premier League. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm swiping right on this. I mean, they've got the tools. They've got the talent. They've got the money. I mean, you can't go wrong here. They're, they're, they're a powerhouse. They're a team to be reckoned with. Swiping right. It's Millet time. It is Millet time. Yes. Now, Man City... Extraordinarily bad. <laughs> <laughs> Across the streams. Oh, no. Oh, God. I'm swiping left. Even as a Man City supporter. Like, they won the treble last year. That's a lot. Now, Arsenal got much better. Right? They, they are loaded for a bear. Man U. Studs. Chelsea is improving. They just added Tyler Adams. Now, how does he fit into that rotation? Now, I'm willing to, to see. West Ham. Sneaky good. Right? They brought in James Ward-Prowse. They just got Harry Maguire from Man U after Harry Maguire got his captaincy revoked. And then Liverpool is always dangerous. Like Liverpool, you know, as long as Mo Salah is there, like Liverpool is going to have a chance. So, you know, the one question I have is Tottenham. Right? Harry Kane, like, what's he going to be? Does he want out? Is Bayern Munich eventually going to hit on the right number? And is Tottenham going to finally, like, let him out? Is he going to, are they going to let Harry Kane go? Mm-hmm. I, I doubt it because Bayern Munich is actually decreasing their offers. They started out at over 120 million and now they're down to about 95. You know, like, maybe you'll bite. But, you know, Sun, another, a, a healthy year of Sun, maybe Tottenham can move up. But it's hard to go back to back. It's hard to go back to back, especially in a, in a, a level of soccer, a level of football that's this talented. I didn't even mention Newcastle, who finished in fourth. Like, Newcastle was surprising last year. And if they c- keep on that trajectory, there's no reason why they can't stay at or near the top of the table. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting. It kicks off on Friday, and I'm here for it. If you're going to twist my arm, like, I'm going to say Man City finishes probably second or third mm. behind. Yeah, so second or third. Arsenal is loaded. And I, gotta, I like Liverpool. I like, you know, objectively, those two teams are going to be talented enough to do it because Man City has moved out a lot of players. Kyle Walker's gone. You know, you, they've moved on. They've kind of shifted to a new direction. And Pep Guardiola's great. Early Holland is still there. Jack Grealish is still there. Foden is still there. De Bruyne is still there. Like, the core is still there, but is it going to be enough? I don't know. Other teams are getting better. So, I would say swipe left on that. Swipe left or swipe right number three. The Philly fans' treatment of Trey Turner. Uh, you, yeah, you got to swipe right on this. It's a good story. You know, it's great. You know, he, he, he had a really just a great weekend. And then he paid it forward. He, he took out an ad and a billboard thanking them. Uh, you know, he's had a really tough season. He hasn't really played up to his contract, but he seems to be a really nice guy. He's a really good player. Um, so I'm swiping right on it. Really good story. I'm swiping left on the Philly fan. <laughs> Who, what, uh, what have you become? Who are you? I don't, I don't even recognize you anymore. <laughs> Who are the? Where are the people that threw batteries on the field? Where are the people that booed Santa Claus? Where are the people that cheered Michael Irvin when he was on the gurney? Where are you? Who are the people that booed Scott Rowland? If I'm fucking Scott Rowland, I am pissed. I, you know, you, I didn't ask to be the next Michael Schmidt. I didn't ask to be the next Michael Jack Schmidt. You guys anointed me the next Michael Jack Schmidt. And then you booed me when I was merely very good. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you is, is what I'm thinking if I'm Scott Rowland as I go into Cooperstown. In all honest, in all sincerity, though, you, you have to swipe right. You, you do. You absolutely do. 
because it's a good moment. You know, you, you got behind your player. It's completely anti anything the, the Philadelphia Phillies or fans of Philadelphia sports in general have done. It's very atypical. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, not, it's amazing. Like, like, so maybe, maybe they're just turning over a new leaf. Like maybe. maybe they're maybe they're not as bad as we think they are or that we've heard they are. I'm willing to think so. You know, it's like it's like uh, what Rocky said in Rocky Four. If I can change and you can change, then we all can change. You as sounded you, just like him there. Uh, well, uh, you know, it, it, I just need to be beaten more to a pulp. You know, I need to be concussed more, and I could have nailed it. But kudos to you, Philly. You probably you you sound like you've evolved, and you're finally learning how to be civilized fans. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air care technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran-owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that D and Z sent you. The Fade Store presents the alleged superstar of the week award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It is time for the alleged superstar of the week. Here's how it goes. We put a poll on our Twitter, oh, excuse me, X account at Fade Route DNZ, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this here show and the coveted ass trophy. And do you know, D, do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week? I don't. Well, he was one of yours. Yes. Brian Cashman. Yes. Brian Cashman. Good for you. Be right. Yes. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for a legend superstar of the week? All right. First up, and I hope she wins. Mega Rapino. In your biggest moment in your last year, you choked on penalty kicks and laughed about it with one of the biggest. Months and with one of the biggest games in U.S. women's soccer, you, you did nothing. You did nothing in this game. You can't badmouth America. Talk about how you should make more money and then go out and play like that. Megan Rapino, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Next, Hal Steibrenner reports our Cashman is safe and Boone's future is uncertain. What? Cashman has not done a damn thing right in the last 14 years. Hicks, Ellsbury, Frazier, Rodon, Jeter, and the list goes on and on. Oh, man. Ryan Cashman's going to stay. The New York Yankees are going to finish in last place in the American League East, and the GM is going to keep his job. What has the world come to? How Steinbrenner, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, the Los Angeles Lakers yeah. signing street clothes to a maximum three-year, $186 million extension, making him the highest paid, paid, paid player per year. The guy's name street clothes for crying out loud. You're giving him more money? Los Angeles Lakers, you are my alleged superstars of the week. What do you got, Z? I am so shocked. Shocked. That you did not put Tim Anderson on your list. No. Like, I am amazed that you did not put Tim Anderson on your list. So I'm going to claim him. I'm going to take him. I had three. I got another one. Tim Anderson, need I say more? You got knocked out. Fuck out. <laughs> Tim Anderson, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Now for my proper list. Blake Martinez, the former Packer, Giant, and Raider linebacker, was banned from an online marketplace after scamming people out of Pokemon cards 
Pokemon. That Pokemon. That's true. Yeah. Scamming Pokemon card collectors. Like he, this dude retired from the NFL to run a Pokemon card scam. <laughs> like are, Blake, are you kidding me? And to think you were all over Madison Square Garden rooting for the Rangers too. Like, dude, that, that's I, I can't believe you. I can't believe you right now. I, I just, uh, I can't have that. So, Blake Martinez, take your Pikachu, take a Charizard, and get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Blake Martinez, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Next up, the New York Red Bulls and their supporters. Yes, the Red Bulls beat NYCFC in the Hudson River Derby and knocked our boys in blue out of the League's Cup. But what followed afterwards was absolutely horrendous. So as per protocol, security held back NYCFC supporters for about 20 minutes so that they can exit their section table. The problem is, is that Red Bull fans were lying in wait for these supporters. Numerous NYCFC supporters were jumped and beaten by members of a notorious Red Bull fan group. Are you kidding me? Like, that's Giants Dodgers level bad. That's insane. And you would think it would be the other way around. Let's get the visiting fans out of here so they don't get their ass kicked. No, let's walk them into the lion's den ourselves. This is like Goodfellas when they walk Tommy into the room and then whack them. Really bad look by the MLS. Really bad look by the, the Red Bull security. Really bad look by the Red Bull supporters. Red Bull supporters, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And then last but not least, Colin Coward. This is bad. <laughs> this, is, this is just bad. This, this is bad. <laughs> like, no joke. This is bad. Colin Coward on his show lists a group of quarterbacks that cannot win the Super Bowl. Right? And on your list, you have like Blake Bortles, and I believe Justin Fields was there, Baker Mayfield, and then Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins is dead. Why is he on this list? Not only is he on the list, he says the name out loud. And that's not what, that's not where he pauses for correction. He pauses at the graphic error that says quarterbacks that can win a Super Bowl. He says it's supposed to be can't win a Super Bowl. There's a dead guy on your list. Moron. Who's getting fired over this? What producer is getting fired over this? You idiot. And then you double down on it in the third hour because you repeated it from, you repeated your first hour. Colin Coward, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we've said our piece. Go to our Twitter, excuse me, X account at FadeRouteDNZ and vote and vote and vote and vote and for our nominees. Just do better, boys. Just do better. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave, from the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook too at SweetLifeBrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043 and tell them DNZ sent you. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, 845-641-3043. 
Sweet Life Brownie Cup because there's always room for a brownie. Order up! We continue with our division by division breakdown of this NFL season. It is time for us to order up. Order up, order up. This week, we are ordering up the NFC North from four to one. Who you got, B? You know, this was harder than I thought. I wrote it and then I had to rewrite it again because, mm. yeah, I was kind of surprised at what I came out with the first time. And I was like, nah, that can't be right. And I thought about it and I, I changed it around. So I got the Packers and it's really just, we finally find out what a terrible coach LeFleur is. <laughs> uh, and I don't think it all comes down to Jordan Love. I think he actually plays well. And I think the young players play well around him, but I think after five games, Mr. LeFleur is going to be showing the door. Number three, I got the Bears. I think the Bears wow some people this year. Again, I think offensively, all the pieces are in place. I think Fields could actually have an MVP type year just by the numbers. They got him weapons. And, you know, I just, I just, uh, their defense concerns me. And I think they're, they're about a year away. Um, Number two, I'm going to go with the Lions. I think offensively they get it done. I'm just concerned with the defense. Aiden Hutchinson is good, but he only plays defensive end. Um, but Garrett got Jared Gosman to a Super Bowl. Montgomery is a good running back. Amon, Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown is a good wide receiver. So, you know, they got all the players in place. And, I don't, you know, Dan Campbell's going to get his team ready to play. I think they play well opening night. But I got them coming in at number two and number one i mean it's just hard it's hard to say see minnesota getting knocked off you know they're you know they're 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 just better than they have better players they have better talent on their team uh justin jefferson's probably the best wide receiver in the league kirk cousins serviceable but you have to imagine that at some point they're gonna get there right at some point they're gonna get to the nfc championship game they're gonna get to a super bowl they have to. So I'm I'm just going to say, like, you know, they have a good year this year. And so I got them winning the division. That's fair. That's very fair. We agree on the Packers. They <laughs> made no real changes other than they shipped eight out of town. And they handed the keys to Jordan Love. It's pretty much the same offense. Except Tunyon's gone. Right? You have Watson, Dobbs. God, I hope that's not true. I, I hope he's not running the same offense he was running with Aaron. God, I hope not. That's not I mean, it, it's pretty bad. Like the, <laughs> the, the, the cupboard is bare. This is, you know, if you look at this team. Man, it's just not this smart, man. I would say this is a running team. If I'm looking at this, if I'm looking at these yeah. collections of wide receivers, sure, sure. and I'm looking at Dylan and Jones, those are the two backs. Those are the two guys that are going to take me to the promised land, and that's not good enough. Because I'm going to stack eight in a box, and I'm going to make Jordan Love beat me. And I don't think he can. Like, that's the that's the thing. You know, they're talking about how, oh, we need to see half a season of Jordan Love before we can really evaluate him. You see him every day in practice. So I think you know what he is. Let's see. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because there's really nobody else on that team. But the Packers are definitely in last place in that division. Third place, I'm going to shock you. I'm taking the Vikings. Okay. Madison, I don't know if he's an every down back. The guys behind him, I don't know if they're ready to go. Now, this might be a brilliant tactic by Dalvin Cook. See how bad they are without me, and then just waltz back in through that door. It could very well be the case. You know, it could be hubris on the part of the Vikings. Jefferson is really the only wide out. Jordan Addison and KJ Osborne are okay. They need to step up this year, right? Because Adam Thielen is no longer there. They need to be the guy. One of them has to prove they can be a number two because Jalen Rager isn't. They brought in Nikhil Harry. She sure as hell isn't. Nikhil Harry is lucky if he can plays this year. So Jefferson is clearly a one. Who's his two? Don't know. 
like TJ Hawkinson, he's good. You know, now there's tape on this Viking on this Vikings team. They were a huge disappointment last year. They got knocked out by the Giants. Let's not forget that. The Giants beat them and beat them up. So there's a blueprint on how to beat this team and how to beat Kevin O'Connell's offense. Now, Zadarius Smith is gone, right? They, Daniel Hunter is still there. Davenport's there. They brought in Byron Murphy. Like, that could be a pretty good, on the corner, that could be a pretty good addition. But is it going to be enough? I don't know. And frankly, I don't think so. So Vikings at three. Number two, the Bears. I really like what they've done this year. You have DJ Moore. You push Mooney to a secondary role. You have Equinemia St. Brown, Vellis Jones Jr. You have talented players. Chase Claypool is who he is. Like, he's going to be confusing. That's why he's no longer a stealer. He'll show you flashes of why he's great and then flashes of why he needs to be shipped out of town. You know, Tunyon is actually with the Bears. So you have a you have two tight ends called Komet and Tunyon. That's pretty good. And then you throw in Mercedes Lewis as a third tight end option, and all of a sudden, Justin Fields has some pretty damn good weapons to complement Khalil Herbert and Dante Foreman. The question is defense. You brought in Ngakwe. You have Tremaine Edmonds. You have A. Jackson still there. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough on defense? Offense, it looks like they're going to be there. Is defense going to be up to snuff? I'm going to say... No, but it will be good enough. And number one, the Lions. This may be the kiss of death. (laughs) Lots of expectations now. Lots of expectations now. Right? Golf, let's see what he can do this year. David Montgomery is there from the Bears. How is he going to do? They've drafted Jameer Gibbs. How is that going? How is that going to work out? St. Brown. Last year he he caught people by surprise. Let's see if he can do that again. Marvin Jones is Marvin Jones, right? He's I trust him. Marvin Jones is old reliable. And I'm not just saying that because he's old. <laughs> Denzel Mims. They got him. What is Denzel Mims? I don't know. Who is who is he? I root he? for that guy. I root for that guy. I. I do too, because the Jets did him dirty. I don't know what he does. He doesn't play special teams. He barely touched the field. I don't know who he is as a player. Like, what? what is he? The saving grace is that in six games, you're going to get Jameson Williams back. But he's been dropping balls left and right in practice. Yes, practice in, in training camp. I, I understand. But dropping balls is dropping balls. You definitely need to be concerned about that. And then... Another year of that defense, which was merely okay. It was merely okay. The Lions were an offensive team last year. You know, Coach Campbell is a great motivator. Like, I would run through a wall for that guy, mostly because I'd be running away from him because he's nuts. But they're talented enough. They need a little bit more on defense. They need a, a better, stronger defensive effort. And I think they'll be able to take home the NFC North this season. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. You can catch our podcast Wednesday nights on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. So until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the Go Raffle. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.